So we have only red mana. We do have Atog, but we can't cast our Inspector, our Thought Cast, our Serpent. I'm really not interested in this hand. I want a mulligan. This hand is way better. Um, I'm thinking I probably ditch the Thraben Inspector. We have Inspector on turn one, Wellspring on turn two, and if we get a third land, we can Hawk Wellspring. Okay, Thriving Isle, and they're naming red, so that can mean several things. Okay, we get another Glinthawk off the top. Let's play Thraben Inspector Pass. Another Thriving Isle and green. Probably Tron would be my guess. Okay, so we found our third land. Uh, we're going to want to play Wellspring. We could also play Atog, but uh, we're going to want to keep that in hand so that it doesn't uh, die to some form of removal. And we'll leave the clue on board here. We want more artifacts for the Atog, but we will break the clue if necessary later to try and find Fling. Okay, there's a lightning bolt at the Inspector. Good thing we didn't play Atog. And there's a power plant, so we are indeed fighting against Tron. Okay, the Mole Drifter is uh, doing its best impression of a divination. And we'll start our turn. Okay, we get Thought Cast, but we cannot cast it unless we use the Chromatic Star. All right, let's uh, get Glinthawk out here and start uh, trying to do a bit of combat damage. Okay, another Thought Cast. Cool. I'm going to draw a bunch of cards next turn. We'll pass. Okay, second Tron piece. And it looks like they're passing here with mana up. We find another Wellspring. Okay, we'll start with combat. Okay, we have a choice here to play another Glinthawk and replay Wellspring. Or we could play Chromatic Star and Thought Cast. I like the Thought Cast play. We have a higher uh, chance of drawing land that way, and then we can glint hawk Wellspring anyway. Or would we be down one mana for that? Well, let's uh, let's thought cast. We're gonna save the white mana here for the glint hawk, and we're going to cast the thought cast before we sacrifice the star. We have plenty of artifacts here, but just the way that affinity works, um, even though we're about to sacrifice the star here, it still counts for the uh, the affinity value. Okay, we get Thraben Inspector and oh, just no lands at all. All right, um, I think that we play Glint Hawk here and uh, present a clock. Okay, so they have full Tron, and then they're just passing. And we get Galv Blast off the top. Having trouble finding our lands here. Let's play Wellspring. Holding up white mana for the Inspector. Okay, no land again. and they're casting Mystical Teachings. I'm going to uh, search through their deck and grab another Teachings.
and cast it. Grabbing Impulse. So they're, they're digging. Compulsive Research is going to let them draw three and discard a land. Discarding a secondary copy of hers is mine. And here's the impulse. Okay, so we have five damage incoming, and another four makes nine. So if we grab Galv Blast off the top, we could just win here. We could steal this game. They have no colored sources now. Okay, now they do. They have plenty of mana as well with the Urza's Tower, so they could easily counterspell something. They could also fog us. Okay, another thought cast. Let's move in for combat first off. Okay, so if we team or battle rage a Glint Hawk, that's not going to be enough damage. I think that we probably play Prophetic Prism Thoughtcast. Try and find some lands. Oh, there's a land. Okay, we'll play that. We're back to seven cards now. So we could play Icker Wellspring, or we could play Gear Seeker Serpent. Uh, let's probably get the Serpent down here. Okay, no exclude, and we'll pass. Okay, opponent is uh, flush with cards and mana, so they're going to be able to do a lot this turn. I expect them to... Uh, huh. That, that is interesting. They're flickering the tower and the prism just to draw cards, I expect. So I think they're really uh, dissatisfied with the cards they have in hand here. Okay, they are passing. They have uh, plenty of mana up here. Uh, let's start with combat. They need the fog in order to survive. Oh, they have something... I don't know what it could be. Mystical Teachings, okay. So this is going to go get the Fog. Okay, and they still have a blue, red, and two mana left up. We're going to be Thought Casting trying to find Galv Blast here, or Fling. Okay, we find another Galv Blast. Looks like they do have a counter spell for it. Prohibit. Okay. Let's see if we can find one more. Uh, we don't have the mana for it, regardless. Uh, I think we probably play Wellspring Mirror Enforcer and pass them. They do have the Moment's Peace uh, access to it from the graveyard, so our next combat step doesn't do anything. Just infinite mystical teachings from the opponent. They're grabbing Pulse of Marasa, which will gain them six life and return Mole Drifter to their hand. Okay, they're keeping up the colored mana for the moment's piece and potentially counter magic. Okay, we find another Atog. 
Let's uh, start with combat and tap down some of their mana. Okay, that's out of the graveyard. Let's draw two cards. Okay, we find another Atog. Play a star. And play one of the Atogs. And I don't see any reason not to. We'll just play another star. And then we'll pass here. Okay, flashing back the mystical teachings again. They still have access to one more in their graveyard, and they just grab Moments Peace. And what do they grab with this teachings? Unwind, okay. So they have a counterspell for a non-creature, and they have a fog. So fling isn't going to do very well. Okay, we find another star. Okay, we can attack all. Uh, they must moments peace, so no combat damage will be dealt. And they have access to at least one counter spell now. Start with a Chromatic Star. Okay, we're going to draw a card. Find Wellspring. Uh, let's go ahead and cast it. Okay, we find the Fling. So if they tap out, we can kill them. Let's go ahead and pass and see if uh, they take the bait. No, they're much smarter than that. Okay, uh, we have Team or Battle Rage, but Moments Peace cancels that. Yeah, we can take two, no problem. And Monomic Wall will probably put the Moments Piece. No, they're returning the, oh, that makes sense, the Ghostly Flicker. So they're going to be able to start getting incredible amounts of value from this little combo, uh, being able to draw two cards and return the Ghostly Flicker every time they cast it. Okay, another Monomic Wall, and yeah, they're targeting the Moments Piece to get an extra casting out of it, and they have access to two colored sources, uh, make that three, so it would be easy for them to counter the Fling, and continuously recast the uh, Moments Piece. Okay, we're going to start cracking clues here. We have plenty of artifacts if we ever get the chance to fling. 
We're not worried about that. Let's just go ahead and pass here. Okay, the opponent has uh, established control here, basically. Um, they're able to get a handful of counter magic, uh, preventing combat damage. Um, there's really no way through the current lock for us. They just have access to far too many mana and too many options. So we're going to go ahead and concede. All right, so how are we going to play against Tron here? Uh, we're going to want counter spells for their blue spells. Um, we could also bring in some number of Hydroblast. We want the Dispel. We could bring in some number of Hydroblast, um, but we're already looking to take out four cards here. Let's take out the team or battle rage. And I think that the late creatures aren't really going to help here. They're going to be able to just prevent the damage. So we're going to try like this. Uh, I don't really bother to bring in the Gorilla Shaman in this matchup because their artifacts cost so many mana that uh, I would need a ton of mana just to be able to blow up their rocks. Um, Prophetic Prism costs 5 mana to destroy. So no lands here, we're going to mull. Uh, we do find lands, um, but they don't cast our spells. So we're not really satisfied with this hand either. This one's a little bit better, we can keep this. And our opponent is mulliganing to 5 as well. Uh, let's see here. We'll get rid of the Fling. And I think probably the Glinthawk. Thoughtcast will have 3 artifacts. So uh, 4 actually with a Thraben Inspector. So we'll be able to cast it quite quickly. Okay, and our opponent also sticks at 5. So we'll start with Inspector Cluso and pass the turn. Okay, we get Galvlast. And another land, okay. So next turn we'll be able to Thought Cast, no problem. They get their own Prism. And we find Icar Wellspring. Okay, let's uh, start with Thoughtcast. Okay, uh, we get Dispel. Can't cast it this turn. Let's play the Wellspring, draw another card. And we'll attack for one and pass back. Okay, so they have two Tron pieces. We get another Galv Blast. So that's 8 damage from the Blasts, and we have a Dispel. Attack for 1. Play the Star. And we'll pass here. Um, if we get a chance, we will crack the clue at the end of the opponent's turn. Just kind of hoping that they don't get the Tron piece here. Okay, we find another Wellspring. And a land. So that'll cast our Dispel. Start with the Wellspring. And find Pyroblast, fantastic. It's a little bit of counter magic. Now we just need a clock. This one damage a turn isn't really getting there. All right, we'll pass. We do have access to the chromatic, chromatic Star to draw one more card. OK, 
Okay, Mirror Enforcer. That'll increase the clock, that's for sure. And we have eight damage in Galv Blast, so they're at effectively eight, but they just found their Tron land. Okay, here's Stonehorn Dignitary, so we can no longer attack. I'm just wondering if I want to try and Galv Blast that now. I think I want to try and respond to a flicker effect. So we'll leave that in hand. And we're going to go ahead and blink um, Prophetic Prism here. We'll replay it, keeping up the red and blue mana. And find an Atog. Okay. Uh, we cannot attack, so we will pass. Another power plant, more mana. It looks like they're passing. All right, let's go to our turn. Find Prophetic Prism. Let's start with combat. Everything here can attack. Looks like they're blocking Mirror Enforcer, and they're probably going to use this opportunity to blink the Dignitary. Okay, um, I think that we probably try and Pyroblast this. We could also try and Dispel it. Just deciding between Pyroblast, Dispel, and Galvanic Blast. I like the Counter Magic option because then they don't draw a card and they don't get their colored source back as well. Let's go ahead and Pyroblast. We have access to a lot of red cards. Counter Target Spell that's blue. Okay, see if damage happens here. Yeah, we take the uh, Rhino off the table. Fantastic. Uh, let's play Prophetic Prism. Okay, and we have access to Galv Blast and Dispel. Here's a Monomic Wall. Grabbing that Ghostly Flicker again. Uh, nothing we can really do about that. Okay, they want to flicker the wall and the prism. So if they flicker the wall, they just get the ghostly flicker back, but they get to draw a card regardless. Uh, we could dispel the flicker here. And that prevents them from drawing a card. Okay, here's another mine. All right, let's uh, make a red mana with the Chromatic Star, draw a card, and we'll hit him with a Galv Blast. Okay, uh, we have another mountain here. Uh, let's start with an attack. Oh, they have something. Is this... Yeah, this is a moment's piece. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We'll play the C Citadel and Prophetic Prism. Draw a card. Get a Mirror Enforcer. Play that. Play the Atog. And we'll pass the turn. We can draw two cards with the Icker Wellsprings here. 
They have one card in hand and Moments Peace. Okay, we find another Atog. They'll have to Moments Peace here. Okay, that gets it out of the graveyard. We can play the other Atog. And we'll pass. Okay, opponent has conceded this game. I think that we basically uh, want to keep the deck the same here. We'll just go ahead and submit. We have 10 minutes left on the clock, so we got to be playing pretty quick. This hand looks fine. We'll keep. Okay, play the seat and pass. We have actually access to dispel this turn. I don't expect them to be playing an instant that we want to counter, though. Let's just go ahead and play Dark Steel Citadel Prophetic Prism. Uh, we could have played the Chromatic Star and kept up the spell, but again, I don't really expect them to be playing a card that I really want to be countering. Although the Impulse would be a good uh, target. Impulse is very strong, especially in the Tron deck, where they're looking for specific cards. Okay, we're missing lands now. Uh, what is this? A Mole Drifter, maybe? Yep. Evoked Mole Drifter. That puts him back to seven cards in hand. Uh, we do find land here. We have access to one, two, three, four, five, six. So I don't think we're going to be able to put the Mirror Enforcer down this turn. We could play the Chromatic Star and then Thought Cast and still hold up the spell. Okay. Uh, I guess we just pass here. Okay, so they found her as a Tron. And a Bonner's Ornament, so they're pretty gassed up. I think that we're going to want to throw a Galve Blast at them. Um, although, Galve Blast does pretty well at removing some of the problem creatures, so we probably just want to hold on to it. Find another Mirror Enforcer. Okay, so we can play Icar Wellspring or Prophetic Prism, and then pay one mana for Mirror Enforcer, and then we can play the other Mirror Enforcer for free. Okay, so we got a pair of 4-4s, four but the opponent um, just resolved an impulse. They've got their Tron online, they've got all their colors. Another impulse. Jeez, two impulse in a row. We do not have the ability to cast Dispel this turn. but we do have access to just a ton of damage. Okay, Dark Steel Citadel. Uh, let's start with an attack. Okay, they're just gonna take the eight. That's good for us. Uh, let's Thought Cast. Okay, draw two more cards. Uh, we can play Thraben Inspector here. 
and then we can hold up the mana for Dispel or Crack Clue. Or we could play Wellspring. I like Thraben Inspector. Okay, this is uh, Mystical Teachings. I think we have to let that resolve. They get Moments Peace. Uh, deep analysis, gain, draw more cards. And they're up to 13 with a moment's peace in hand. Okay. Um, let's see here. They'll be able to cast the moment's peace twice if I dispel it. Let's crack the clue. Find another artifact land. Okay. A Pyroblast, okay. Play the Great Furnace. Uh, move in for combat. That's nine damage. Okay, let's uh, try and dispel this so they have to recast it. And that will tap quite a bit of their mana. And get the moment's piece out of the graveyard so they can't flash it back. I'm thinking probably play the probably play the Wellspring, draw a card, but we might want to just play the Atog instead. Let's put the Atog out. Oh, they might have a counter spell for that. Yep, Blue Elemental Blast counters my Atog. Uh, we could Pyroblast that. Get the Atog onto the field. Good morning, Handsome. Thanks for joining us. Just deciding if I want this Atog to resolve or not. Counter target spell that's blue. Oh, they might have uh, another counter spell effect here. Uh, prohibit or another blue elemental blast. Okay. We lose this counter war. Uh, we have access to one mana left over. We could Galv Blast their face, put them to nine, and present lethal here. Well, that's always the question. Okay, we're just going to pass. Um, I like having access to the Galv Blast to get rid of the problematic creatures that Tron can play. Okay, uh, they're going to lose two life for that. They're at 10 now. Galv Blasts are nearly lethal. Uh, Mystical Teachings, we have no response to that. They'll probably get another um, Moments Peace. Uh, Mystical Teachings instead. And this Mystical Teachings will also resolve and probably go get Moments Peace. Yep. Um, they have enough mana to Moments Peace, but we have two Galv Blast in hand. So if we get uh, another damage spell, we might steal this game. Let's go to the end step and cast one of these Galv Blasts. Okay, they're at six. Uh, moments Peace on upkeep. Okay, that resolves. And we get Atog. 
All right, uh, we'll play land and Wellspring, draw a card. Let's see if we draw Fling. No, we get Prophetic Prism. So we no longer have enough mana to Fling, but if we draw uh, Galv Blast, we'll be okay. Uh, another Atog. Okay. Um, let's uh, put an Atog out. We could also sacrifice the Chromatic Star and try one more time to get that last Galv Blast. Ah, uh, we miss again. Okay, let's play the Atog. Okay, another card out of their hand. We would not have been able to resolve that Galv Blast. They had a counterspell for it. Um, Moment's Peace has activated, so these creatures will do no damage. Let's pass the turn. Ah, Pulse of Marassa. Okay, putting them back to 12 life, and they have Mold Drifter. Which puts them back up to 5 cards in hand. And Monomic Wall. Uh, I suppose to return the... Oh, the Blue Elemental Blast. Do they have a Moment's Peace in hand? Maybe they don't need it. Because they have the blockers. And that protects them from Fling. Alright, let's uh, start with a Glint Hawk. And return uh, Icar Wellspring to draw a card. Trying to play fast, but our opponent will pa won't pass back priority. Come on, opponent. Just under four minutes. Yep. Not a lot of time. The uh, the opponent must be very familiar with Tron, being able to keep keep more time on their clock than we are. Spend a little bit of time playing this deck over the weekend just to kind of get a handle on it. Hey, there we go. I'm almost a magic card. Cooperation. That's right, because if anything knows anything about Cooper, it's that he works well with others. Sarcasm. Okay, so our opponent was playing quite quickly before, but they've uh, slowed down significantly here. I wonder what that means. Um, okay, so they have the Blue Elemental Blast in hand. If we play the Atog, it's just going to go to the graveyard. Don't want to throw the Thraven Inspector under the bus there. Let's attack with our two four fours. Okay, they're going to block with both their creatures. Let's get those off the board then. Oh, they have Ephemerate. Okay. 
Um, they have a uh, mana left to counter this Gal Blast. And we won't be able to fling. We don't have enough mana if we cast the Galv Blast. But that would let us get the Atog onto the board. So they're going to be forced to counter the Galv Blast here. Okay, but they're out of mana. Um, that blue elemental blast will be able to kill the Atog though on their turn. So it's not looking too good. We can play the Atog so we can sacrifice the Wellspring to draw a card. They probably return the Ephemerate here. Yes, yes they do. So they're going to be able to constantly blink their wall and return spells over and over and over again. They have a ton of mana, ton of cards in hand, uh, and a ton of time on their clock. So this game is basically over at this point. We uh, fought the good fight. We got close, but uh, I'd say this game is over. All right, we're going to concede here and move on to our next match. Uh, we have a one land hand. Um, we can get Chromatic Star into play. This is uh, really not looking like a great hand. Let's mulligan. Um, we have two lands and Chromatic Star. We can get an Atog onto the field. This is definitely better than what we had. And if we take um, our time, we can Thought Cast with the Chromatic Star. So let's keep. And we'll get rid of one of the enforcers. Okay, our opponent's starting with Plains Thraben Inspector. So, my first guest is probably Boros Bully. Basic Mountain. And Squadron Hawk, definitely Boros Bully. We're going to have to watch out for Prismatic Strands if we try and fling our Atog. Because they will be able to prevent red damage. If we want, we should be able to crack our Chromatic Star and cast Thought Cast on our turn. Draw three cards. All right, cancel that, it didn't work properly. Let's try again. There we go. Okay, we do find another land in the Ancient Den, but we're gonna have a little bit of trouble casting our spells. We're going to have a much better matchup in games 2 and 3 when we have access to Electricery and Crack Clan Shaman. So let's try and uh, keep our clock healthy here. Okay, uh, no lands there. We can play the Atog or the Icar Wellspring. Um, Atog will be vulnerable to their Lightning Bolts. So let's play the Wellspring first, and we'll hold up Galv Blast. Don't mind sacrificing a Wellspring to keep an Atog healthy, but I would not want to sacrifice one of my lands to keep the Atog healthy. So 
So the bully deck will start to be able to do significant damage starting this turn. Looks like they're going to continue going wide. We'll want to keep our Galv Blasts for their Seeker of the Way. I don't want to trade one of my Galv Blasts to prevent one damage here. Okay, uh, just have no blue mana. And our Mirror Enforcer costs three mana. So we cannot play Enforcer and Atog. All right, well, we'll just play an Atog then and pass. If they have Lightning Bolt for it, we can save it with Wellspring. And Atog can block the Thraben Inspector. Okay, Firebolt, so let's go ahead and save it. And draw a card. Very nice, we got the Seed of the Synod. And this can now block Thraben Inspector, no problem. Is this a Journey to Nowhere, perhaps? Nope, another Squadron Hawk, okay. So if they have Rally the Peasants in hand, we're in quite a bit of trouble. I expect they'll just attack for three here. Yes, indeed. So we could Galv Blast the two blockers, and then we would have access to three, four, five artifacts, which would be 11 damage. So that's not very good. We could double Galv Blast their face, put them to um, 13 or 12, 13. And then we could try and fling. I don't think we would have enough even with a fling. I think we just uh, untap here. Okay, let's go ahead and draw cards. And then we just have to pass here. Um, we can at attack with the Atog. Uh, they'll have to block. Well, I suppose they could just let it through. We don't have enough uh, gas here to kill, to kill them. So this is just a, a bounce. Okay, they're going to Lightning Bolt the Atog. We can save it, but it will cost us one of our artifact lands. We're going to let that go. We don't have access to the fling. I don't want to be sacrificing my lands to the Atog right now. All right, we're just going to get rid of one of these Scrodgen Hawks, and then we'll take the three. We'll draw two cards. Find another Atog. Really having trouble with our mana here. Let's uh, play Atog. play an Enforcer, and we can hold up Galv Blast.
Should have attacked there. Okay, so they become the Monarch, allowing them to draw an extra card at the end of each of their turns. Okay, they're attacking for two in the air. Um, we could get rid of one of those so that we don't die to Double Bolt, but it feels pretty bad throwing a Gal Blast away at a Squadron Hawk. Okay, we find Chromatic Star. Let's uh, play a Serpent. Play the Star. Uh, I think we'll eat the Star. Draw a card. Get a Glint Hawk. Okay, Glint Hawk doesn't do very much here. We don't have uh, any of the usual rocks. Um, we can't really attack here. They can block, block, and then kill us on the crackback, I think. Or they don't even need to block. They could just uh, let that pass, and then we would be taking more damage. Let's keep one of the enforcers back. We can block some of their ground guys if they come in. But this is at least starting the clock. And then we can play Glint Hawk and replay the Tapped Enforcer for free. Okay, we're going to eat up this Palace Sentinels. Play the Glint Hawk and return the Enforcer that's tapped. So they're still really just looking for Rally the Peasants. Um, if they find one of those, we're toast. But uh, we are starting to develop a, a scary board here. And some of the damage cannot be prevented, and they're also in different colors. So Prismatic Strands isn't going to be as good as the card can be versus uh, mono-colored decks. For mana, this looks like maybe another Palace Sentinels or something. Oh, nope, Battle Screech. So they're going to go wide in the air. Okay, we find another Atog. Pretty much all their creatures are flying, so we can't block anything. Except for the Thraben Inspector, and we'll have creatures to play post-combat to block that. Probably should have put the Gear Seeker into play first. Just in case we wanted to sacrifice anything to Atog. So that's 8, 10, 15 damage on the stat. Uh, 15 damage potentially coming through. They did have to block something. The Atog would have just done a ton of damage. They have one, two, three, four, five, six damage on the table here. So we might have a turn available to us. Okay, they're continuing to block. This is only good if they don't have um, Rally the Peasants. Okay, we got the Monarch, which is nice. We get to draw an extra card. Let's go ahead and put the rest of our hand down onto the board. We'll end the turn and draw a card. Let's 
see what we get. Another serpent. That's not going to help us this turn. So they have five damage in the air. Attacking for three here. They do have to keep some things back for blocks. Okay, they're going in for max damage. Maybe they have lightning bolt in hand. We have no possible blocks here. We'll go to two. All right, do you have lightning bolt? That's not lightning bolt. What is this? Oh, it's a fire bolt from flashback. All right, GG opponent. We probably should have kept the uh, Glint Hawk back there. All right, let's bring in Electricery and Crack Clan Shaman. Uh, we could also bring in Dispel. And we want to take out, let's see here, five cards. I really like Mirror Enforcer in this matchup. Gear Seeker Serpent is pretty good too. Oh, thank you. You're totally right. Each creature without flying. So that's not going to be nearly as good in this matchup. So we'll just bring in Electricery and Dispel. Um, the Crack Clan Shaman can hit uh, some other guys on the ground if we hold priority, but I don't think it's good enough. Uh, let's take out one of our Atogs and one of our Inspectors. Again, they have access to Prismatic Strands, so Fling is going to be pretty risky business. Maybe we'll take out one of the flings and keep the Atogs so that we can attack with them and uh, use them for pressure. Okay, uh, not a great hand. Not great by any stretch. We would be looking at... Uh, Turn 2, Prophetic Prism. Turn 3, Thraben Inspector Thawcast. Let's mulligan this. Uh, this is way worse. We're going to have to mulligan again. Okay, um, this is okay. We can keep this. Not happy about it. So we're going to want to keep our lands and some of our rocks. Maybe get rid of the Thraben Inspector Prophetic Prism. Or we could keep the... Hmm, yeah, I think we're going to have to do it that way. And we'll just hope they don't have a Mox Monkey in hand. Otherwise, it's going to be a very short match. Oh, Electricery, very nice. Looking for another land off the top, please. And no Mox Monkey. Oh, Shenanigans. Well, that's going to be a problem. They're just going to destroy our lands turn after turn. Okay, Thraben Inspector. So we could Glint Hawk, return the Furnace, play the Furnace, and then Glint Hawk, return the Prophetic Prism. And that would leave us with a pair of 2 2 flyers on the board. We could also return the Furnace so they wouldn't be able to shenanigans our final land. OK, 
get a tog off the top. Okay, so we're going to return the Great Furnace so that they can't uh, get rid of our second land here, or our only land rather, and we'll just pass the turn. They're having shenanigans for our artifact lands is definitely a problem. Yeah, they're killing the Prophetic Prism here. And they're going to have access to four mana next turn, while we only have access to one. Oh, they mill the Battle Screech? Lucky. Okay, what are they going to do with their two mana? Oh, Firebolt, get rid of one of our creatures. And a Lightning Bolt, get rid of the other one. Okay, this is GG. They're going to be able to kill our land every turn that we get one. Okay, so we have lands and spells. This is a tap land, but uh, better than nothing, we'll keep. could start with a star, but I think I'd rather get this out, um, and I think we'll name blue to be able to cast that thought cast later. Okay, snow covered island, so we're playing against uh, probably one of the fairy control decks. They're going to have access to removal for our Atog. Okay, we'll play Thraben Inspector and Chromatic Star. That'll get us a few artifacts. We should be able to Thought Cast next turn. Okay, Brainstorm with Evolving Wilds, they'll be able to shuffle those cards away. And we get Mirror Enforcer. We have three artifacts, so Thoughtcast costs full mana. We could also Wellspring and try and find a mana source for Thraven Inspector. I don't mind paying two mana for Thoughtcast, that's still a pretty good deal. And we find land, but not a land will cast the Thraven Inspector unless we get rid of the star. Okay, we'll attack with the Inspector and then draw a card and play the other Inspector. Okay, we get another land. And we'll pass here. Okay, so they still haven't shown us a second color yet. And they're doing a lot of digging. They choose to shuffle and another island. And Teamer Battle Rage. Oh, that could be a nice surprise if we uh, manage to resolve Atog.
So we have five artifacts, so we could play Atog and Enforcer. I like that play. And then we can play Wellspring next turn and Team Battle Rage if they uh, are foolish enough to tap out. I imagine they will have something like uh, Snuff Out. Um, no, no Snuff Out available. They don't have Swamp. Only Blue Mana is going to make it hard to remove the Atog. But they could have something like Snap. Um, I haven't previously seen Impulse in a, uh, in a blue control deck. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, they're snapping the Atog. Get that out of there. So the Team Rebout Rage isn't going to be of too much value here. Though we could do 8 with the Mirror Enforcer, make it 10 with the Thraven Inspectors, put them to 7. Alright, let's, let's start with an attack. Okay, we'll play Icker Wellspring. Get another land. And then we'll play Atog and hope they don't have a blue elemental blast up. Okay, and we'll pass like that. Another impulse from the opponent. Very powerful card, but not one I would expect to see in uh, the blue decks. Normally we see that in the Tron decks. Ash Barons. And they go get another island. So they must be a mono blue deck. We'll be bringing in our Pyroblasts for sure. They have access to two lands. So... Let's see what this is. Is it another snap? Yep, they're snapping the Atog again. Okay, we're still attacking in for big damage here. So they're going to have to do something about our board. They can't just uh, continuously focus on the Atog like that. Okay, uh, Galv Blast pretty nice. Let's uh, draw a card. Get Glinthawk. Okay, we could Glinthawk the Prophetic Prism, hold up red for Galvblast. I think it would actually be better to Glinthawk the Wellspring here so we have access to any colored mana. And then we'll pass. Opponent does have a lot of land and a lot of cards in hand, but our board presence is uh, oppressive. Okay, so they are playing a second color. Although they might be just playing the Demir Aqueduct for the uh, synergy with Snap. I wonder if this is some kind of combo and we're about to die. 
All right. Um, so I think that this would kill us. Let's try and Galv Blast this creature. And if that resolves, then uh, we're okay. Nope, they have Dispel. But they have no more mana available anyway. So we win. Um, I think that would have been an infinite mana combo. So we were in a bit of trouble there. Uh, we can bring in Pyroblast. Um, we could bring in Dispel if we wanted. Leave No Trace would also get rid of their uh, auras. So we could just uh, get rid of both auras at the same time. Um, Fling seems quite loose if they're going to be running counter spells. Team or Battle Rage is fine. I think the Atogs are quite weak though because they're going to be running Hydro Blasts. So we'll try this. Might have been better to keep one of the flings in there, but uh, I'm more comfortable with Team or Battle Rage against this deck. And then the Leave No Trace is definitely a possibility um, if they're running this weird combo that relies on enchanting their lands then uh, that would potentially blow them out. Um, this hand isn't great. Um, kind of clunky. We would have turn 2 Prophetic Prism. Turn 3 Atog. I'm going to Maul. This is a far more interesting hand. Um, still awkward. We're not going to be able to play the Thraben Inspector. But we have two Pyroblasts and the Prophetic Prism to cast them. Uh, I think we just get rid of the Dark Steel Citadel here. Come on, opponent. It's your turn. Okay, looks like no plays yet. They could have a, a brainstorm. Okay, team about a rage, meh. Okay, ponder on their turn. Okay, and they have the aqueduct. Okay, so let's get the prism in play. And we'll have the pyroblast to get rid of the, uh, the problem enchantments that they have available to them, which uh, enchant their aqueduct.
Okay, I'm going to keep the clue up, and uh, we'll crack the clue end of turn if we don't need Pyroblast. We have the Prophetic Prism to be able to cast it. We're not interested in any of their cantrips. We're only interested in their enchantments. That's how they win the game. So we want to get rid of those. And we'll have a counter war when they try and resolve one. It'd be much better for us if we have uh, two Pyroblasts available rather than just one. Looks like we got another turn here. So let's crack our clue. Find Mirror Enforcer, that'll present a clock. Excellent. Would have really liked to land here, though. Uh, let's play Prism and see if we can find a land. No such luck. Um, we could Glint Hawk return a land and then play a land so that we still have access to Pyroblast and we increase our clock. Well, our opponent is uh, playing lands every turn, so they have that up on us. Oh, we got a we got another land. Wonderful. One, two, three, four, five, six. Play Chromatic Star. Mirror Enforcer is now free. And we have access to two Power Blasts. Okay, they're cracking both of their Evolving Wilds this turn. They might be planning to go off next turn. Maybe they're trying for it now. Perplex. Okay, so they're transmuting to find a 3-drop. That's an interesting card. Counter target spell unless its controller discards their hand. Okay, and they get freed from the real. Okay, we will not have enough damage here, I don't think. That's uh, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage if we use the team or battle rage. We will attack all, play Thraben Inspector, and pass. Okay, this is the turn. Oh, they're spending mana on Impulse here. So they might not even have it yet. Okay, let's crack our clue. Get a Wellspring and another Enforcer. Uh, we're going to try and win the game here. 
four, five, six, seven, eight. It puts them to one. So we could battle rage the Glint Hawk. So that if they have snap, we don't lose value from the enforcer. Uh, we are going to fight over this. Or maybe maybe we don't. Maybe we don't fight over it at all and let them have this. And then we can Pyroblast the more important spells. Oh, they're tapping our... Uh, they're tapping our lands here. Oh, it looks like they're both targeting the same land, which is funny. Okay. Let's go ahead and tap that for blue. Oh, no. Okay, they so they switched it. All right. And we're already in the block step, so let's just go ahead and tap both of those. We'll get our mana and see what they do, um, because if they don't do anything, we just win here. And they've spent two mana. Okay, they have another spell. Let's try again. Do they have another Hydroblast? Do they have a Dispel? Hey, we got there. We can play Chromatic Star, but... Big whoop. Let's mouth. This is much better. We'll keep. And I think we get rid of one of our lands. Uh, we'll get rid of the Ancient Den. We have all of our colors. Okay, oh, that's a perfect draw off the top. We did not want to play the Glint Hawk. We would have had to return our land there. Burning Tree Emissary. So they've got a really good start. Um, this is obviously Stompy. Yeah, a very good start. So we're going to be taken four to the face here no interest in blocking with raven inspector right now okay we get another inspector so we could play a second inspector we could play wellspring I think that second inspector gets us more artifacts, which gets us closer to Gear Seeker Serpent, which is where we really want to be. And then we can potentially double block the Burning Tree Emissary, get some value that way. Okay, three lands. Kind of fingers crossed the opponent has another land or two in the hand.
Oh, the elephant guide. That is very, very strong here. Makes their creature a 7-5, and they're going to be able to have a 5-3 trample. Are they going to attack with a burning tree here? Probably not. Um, so we can prevent a few damage here. Uh, we're not going to bother. We get Galv Blast off the top, but it no longer takes care of the Nettle Sentinel. So that's a problem. And we don't have the double blue for the Serpent. So we'll play the Wellspring. And we'll hold up Galv Blast. So we can block Nettle Sentinel, Galv Blast it, and then we can play Gear Seeker Serpent next turn. Okay, so we are going to have to decide how we're going to block here. Um, if we put the Thraben Inspector in front of the Emissary, um, it would basically be doing the same thing as if we put the Thraben Inspector in front of the Nettle Sentinel, so we'll just double block and then Galf Blast. And we'll Galf Blast on end step so they don't have an opportunity to put the Rancor onto another creature. Oh, it looks like they have something else regardless. Okay, they're going to equip the bow onto the ranger. So they're going to be able to finish us off in a couple turns anyways, just with the ranger and the bow. We don't have any way to gain life here, so we're pretty toast. If they didn't have the longbow, I'd say that we were very close to stabilizing here, but longbow means that we're dead in two turns. They might even be able to uh, do us three damage this turn. They could... Tap the Quirion Ranger, do one to us. Tap Forest, and then return the Forest, and untap the Quirion Ranger, play the Forest. Tap the Quirion Ranger, that does two damage to us, and they have three mana left over. So they can just go ahead and re-equip the bow to the Burning Tree Emissary, put us to one. And then we die on the opponent's upkeep. Uh, even Team or Battle Rage isn't going to help us here. Okay, this is about what I thought would happen. They can pretty much just pass here. They don't have to tap that. Don't expect them to attack here. Let's just go ahead and see what we draw. Oh, no, that kills us on our upkeep. Very good. Cool. Okay, so how are we going to fight against Stompy? Um, we could bring in the Crack Clown Shaman. Um, Electricery isn't going to do a ton of work against uh, Stompy, but... 
I think that it is better than nothing. And uh, actually, quite a few of their creatures have one toughness. Um, there's also Leave No Trace, which could get rid of quite a few of their problem enchantments. Um, they run Rancor and Elephant Guide, but we might be subbing that one back out depending on what we're taking out of the deck. I think we can take out, let's see here, a couple Atogs, a Fling, a Wellspring. One of the Leave No Trace, we'll keep the other one. And one of the Serpents. Okay, so this hand isn't great, but it's okay. We can second turn Wellspring, and then return it to hand. We have access to Leave No Trace, which can get rid of uh, an Elephant Guide. But the rest of our stuff is uh, hmm, fairly far, far off. I think we can do better. Let's try. Um, so this hand is really not better. This hand is okay. And we'll put back the Serpent and the Battle Rage. Mirror Enforcer, Mirror Enforcer won't be too far off. Let's see if we can draw some nice artifacts off the top. Get a uh, another land so we have access to all of our colors. Um, we can crack the clue, although it takes us a little bit further off the Mirror Enforcer. So if we leave the clue, we're going to be able to play the Mirror Enforcer for three on our turn. Um, if we let this get through, they could potentially play a uh, a Berserker. What is that? Um, something Scrab Clan, I think. So it might be worth throwing the Inspector under the bus here so that they don't have access to that. Oh, oh my, natural state to get rid of one of our lands. Um, so we're not going to be able to play the Mirror Enforcer here. Let's crack our clue while we can. And draw some more lands. Ah, see, that's what I was worried about. That's why I blocked. So now it's just a 1-1. One, one. Okay, Chromatic Star. Once again, we have access to three artifacts. Next turn, we can play Mirror Enforcer. Gleeful Sabotage. Oh, no. That's going to get rid of our Chromatic Star, isn't it? Well, we can tap the star so that we can at least draw a card off of it. And we'll go red mana in case we get Galv Blast off the top. Okay, we miss. Opponent's doing really well to uh, keep us off of our lands here.
Galv Blast is a little bit late. So we have a choice between holding up Galv Blast or playing Prophetic Prism. Um, seeing as how I played the Great Furnace there, it kind of looks like I'm leaning towards Galv Blast. I should have played uh, Darksteel Citadel if I was going to play Prophetic Prism. Kind of hoping to catch an Elephant Guide here. Okay, uh, Rancor is targeting the Pit Skulk. So let's try and uh, fizzle the Rancor. It looks like that worked. Okay, we get Glinthawk. So we can play Prophetic Prism and then return the prism play Glinthawk. And we have a blocker. Okay, we get Galv Blast off the top. So we might want to just hold that up instead. And that way we can play the Mirror Enforcer next turn. Okay, Gleeful Sabotage again. And it looks like they're only going after the Prism because they can't conspire because the Sentinel is tapped. Okay, so if we kill one of their creatures, they could have... Uh, that spell, um, which would have done us more damage there. Let's go ahead and get rid of one of their creatures. And we get to untap. Fantastic. So I'll play the Crack Clan Shaman. We could take the Nettle Sentinel off the table, but we don't want to do that because that would take two of our artifacts off the table. Okay, Chromatic Star. Now, if we want to play the Glint Hawk, we have to um, sacrifice the star. And then we could return one of our lands and replay it. Okay, um, we don't want to uh, stumble into um, a green instant here and lose our Crack Clan Shaman to their Nettle Sentinel. So we're just going to pass and hope to play that Mirror Enforcer that's been sitting in our hand for turn after turn uh, on our next turn. They're also going to be leery about continuing to play any creatures now that we have the Crack Clan Shaman on the board. Okay, so I think these cost four. Yeah, we can go ahead and play one. And then we'll attack for two in the air and pass. Hey, we turned the corner. That was a really tough one. All right, um, I'm really not feeling the leave no trace here. We're going to take that out.
Um, I'm really kind of off of the ATOG here because they're showing us that they uh, have no qualms with destroying our artifacts. Um, Dispel won't counter that. Um, those are... I, I suppose one of them is an instant. Perhaps we bring in Wellspring here to draw extra cards. Although Atog is a decent blocker as well. I'm a little bit leery about Gear Seeker Serpent. Um, it would be a fantastic creature on the board, but just a little bit leery about getting it uh, onto the board. Alright, let's try this. Okay, we only have one land, so we can only play one spell in this hand. We're going to mull. Uh, we have two lands this time. Um, it doesn't cast our Thraven Inspector, but we have lots of options we're going to keep. I also really like the Crack Clam. Um, and I think we're going to lose the... Uh, probably the Chromatic Star. That replaces itself, though, if they try and destroy it. Let's get rid of the Mirror Enforcer instead. And hope that we can draw another one. Okay, well, there it is. Good thing we got rid of one. Uh, let's start with Darksteel Citadel so that it cannot be destroyed. And we'll play Chromatic Star, and if they want to destroy that, we draw a card. Okay, so they're attacking here, so they're... Uh, their Berserkers are going to be that much better, if they have any. No, they have River Boa. Okay. So Crack Clan Shaman here is going to be pretty good. I can wipe their board. But it will cost me everything in order to do that. So yeah, I could play Crackland Shaman with the Chromatic Star and then sacrifice two artifacts and wipe their board. But that would leave me with absolutely nothing. And they would have two forests and three cards in hand. So I would rather just play Prophetic Prism. And pass the turn. Hope that uh, I'm not just dead. Would have been nice to get rid of the River Boa when it didn't have a shield on, but the Crack Clan Shaman can do multiple stacks of damage, which would mean they would have to have multiple regeneration shields. Okay, Nest Invader. Again, Crack Clan Shaman can take care of all of this with two activations. Oh, Hunger of the Powell Pack. That's going to be very good. Um, that means the Shaman cannot get rid of the Burning Tree Emissary. Okay, we have no nothing to do. We'll have to just take all the damage. And we get another land. Okay. So the Mirror Enforcer only costs two. Um, and we can reduce that cost by playing Thraben Inspector. So it only cost one. And then we can play the Crack Clan Shaman as well. Okay, so I believe the more Mirror Enforcer is now free. Then we play this. Okay. And now we pass. So we can do some fun stuff with the Shaman if they uh, attack with the Burning Tree Emissary. They're going to have to be very cautious about how they play the next few turns. And we can sacrifice these clues so that we don't lose our lands and our mana. If we need to, we can even sacrifice the Enforcer. Oh, Gleeful Sabotage. So let's see what they're hitting. The Prophetic Prism and the Mirror Enforcer. OK, 
Okay. We still have enough uh, on the table that we can kill the Burning Tree Emissary if they try to attack with it. We can sacrifice the, both the clues. Okay, they are attacking. They have one card left in hand. I just have to hope that it's not something absolutely backbreaking here. Go to blocks. Block here. I don't mind uh, activating the Shaman for four. So we could put the Thraben Inspector in front of the River Boa, and then we would only take two. Because I can sacrifice both the Citadels and the Clues, and then I play Sita Sanad Prophetic Prism. I'm going to want to let the damage go through first. Okay, and now we're going to do some fun stuff with the Shaman. Nice. So now we're reset. Okay, we get land, so we can glint hawk and return the prism. Okay, we get Galv Blast off the top, very nice. Oh, we got another Galv Blast, very nice. So we can answer uh, a lot of the, uh, the problematic cards here with two Galv Blasts. Let's go ahead and get rid of one of the Nettle Sentinels. Very good. Draw another card. Get another land. Okay. Uh, we have Galvlast to kill the Quirion Ranger if uh, a Rancor or Elephant Guide gets cast at it. So let's go ahead and start attacking. Get a clock going. Uh, we don't mind taking one damage here. It's only if they start casting spells that that's a problem. Okay, thought cast, fantastic. Let's draw two. And let's draw another one. Fling, okay. And we'll play the chromatic star. Okay, they have drawn too many lands. Six lands is far too many. Looks like they might have Vines of Vastwood. I would definitely recommend that the opponent does nothing here. Okay. We get another Glintalk. Excellent. Things are looking good. Excellent. 
and we got electricery to top it off. So we're we're looking really strong here. I don't imagine the opponent can get back from this. We're fine with taking a damage. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And that's fine too. We're going to do 4, 8, 10 damage on our turn. Uh, they don't have anything that can block flyers. Okay. Another one land hand. Uh, really do not like this. I don't like my one land hands. Let's uh, send it back. Been doing a lot of mulliganing with this deck. Okay, we got two lands, Prophetic Prism, Thraben Inspector. Uh, we got to get rid of one card. Uh, I'm leaning towards the Atog here. I like the Galv Blast as a removal spell for a problematic creature. And we don't have Fling, so we'll just get rid of Atog. I'd rather build towards Mirror Enforcer, especially with the Thraben Inspector here. Basic Mountain, but no play. Could be holding up Lightning Bolt. Oh, we got another Atog off the top. Good thing we uh, bottomed Atog. And no play from the opponent. Okay, so they're definitely on burn. And we can get rid of the Thermal Alchemist uh, next turn. We could get Red Land off the top. No. So we have to play Prophetic Prism here. And we were one card off of getting rid of that Alchemist. Yeah, so close to that red land. Another alchemist. What a pain. Okay. Well, at least they're not uh, tapping on tapping that alchemist. A uh, Gav Blast off the top, please. No luck. All right, let's see what we have for artifacts. We have five artifacts, which means the Mirror Enforcer costs two. So we could play the Enforcer and Galv Blast, one of their alchemists. The pinging. Yeah, it's the pinging is real. All right, let's uh, move on. No attacks, no point. All right, here comes the damage. We do have a pretty nice clock here, though. Mirror Enforcer is going to be able to do a lot of damage. We can put down Atog, which means they're going to have to put uh, a spell towards the creature. Hopefully they won't have a, uh, a Searing Blaze for it. Okay, Rift Bolt is in the Exile Zone, and Thermal Alchemist is tapped, so we can attack with the Inspector. Okay, we get another Mirror Enforcer. It only costs one mana, so we could play Atog and Enforcer.
I want to get the 8 tog out because it's something that the opponent has to answer. And if they don't, it could potentially win next turn. Let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 14, 15 damage just from the 8 tog. All right, where's that Rift Bolt going? Going to face. Makes sense. It's too bad we're not playing green. Don't have access to Weather the Storm. Okay, here's a Needle Drop. Getting very close to dead here. Um, if they have just about anything, I think we're dead. Fire Blast, Lightning Bolt. They have three cards in hand. They must have something else. Yep, Fire Blast. All right. Well, we didn't have to wait long. Oh, you got to get in for that extra ping, huh? Lol. You want to you wanna cast a Lightning Bolt too? All right. So we have Dispel and Hydroblast to counter their spells. Otherwise, I'm not too interested in the rest of what I have here. Ah, uh, the Thraben Inspectors don't seem very strong. Gear Seeker Serpents are a little bit clunky. I mean, realistically, I really want to go for the 8-tog plan here. Um, I think that's the fastest way to win. So we're going to want to keep in our artifacts, which means we want to keep Thraben Inspector. We could get rid of Glint Hawk, but that helps us draw towards 8-tog. I think we're going to get rid of the Serpents and one of the Glint Hawks. We're really going for ATOG here, I think. Okay, um, this hand is fine. It has lands and spells. We have Galv Blast for their ping creatures. We have a first turn play, second turn plays. Let's go. Okay, our opponent has Mulliganed. So that's good news for us. Burn really needs a uh, critical mass of spells. So they're losing a spell and being on the draw gives us uh, a little boost, but it's still going to be a very difficult match. Okay, we'll start with, uh, I suppose, a furnace and a star. Gonna take a quick look at my burn sideboard here. There it is. Electricery, Martyr of Ashes, Keldon Marauders, Smash to Smithereens. Ugh. And Molten Rain. So I had four Smash to Smithereens in my sideboard when I was playing Burn. It's gonna be pretty good if they get those. Okay, uh, Dark Steel Citadel. We'll play that so they can't take us off blue mana, and we'll play the Prophetic Prism. Thraben Inspector, a little bit late. Do they have a smash? Nope, Firebrand Archer. So we'll get rid of that with a Galv Blast. And we get a Hydro Blast. Very nice. So we'll keep that for something else. We can Galv Blast this. Best card to Hydro Blast is going to be Fire Blast.
but they won't be casting that until the end of the game. So we might be better off like countering this, for example. The, uh, the creatures just do incredible work. So getting rid of their creatures means that we're going to prevent um, upwards of four, five, even six damage. I will go ahead and play the Prophetic Prism. Draw another card. Get a land. We can draw a card with the Clue or the Wellspring. Let's just go ahead and attack for one. And see if we can draw a Enforcer. Uh, we miss. All right, let's pass. Okay, they get another creature. Uh, we're out of removal spells at this point. Okay, we get Thought Cast. Very nice. Let's draw two cards. Uh, not that impressive. Let's uh, draw another card. That's better. So we can play the Seat, Blast the Alchemist. Get that off the board. Uh, attack for one, then play Thraven Inspector. Okay, so we've survived to turn five and we still have 17 life and the opponent is still playing creatures. They have played so many creatures. Uh, are we gonna be able to find another removal spell? Let's find out. Uh, not yet. Let's crack a clue. Uh, no luck. Well, we still have the star we can crack. Ah, we find Mirror Enforcer. That's a good card. Let's play that. Mirror Enforcer will hit pretty hard with Teamer Battle Rage. Surprised they didn't block one there. But they still have four cards in hand, so they're going to be able to do a ton of damage with this Alchemist. And it even set off the Needle Drop. This Alchemist has already done two damage by itself. And another Needle Drop, just uh, replacing the cards in their hand, doing tons of damage. But if their Alchemist is tapped, they won't be able to block the Enforcer. Ah, they wouldn't want to block that anyway. And we got Battle Rage to do extra damage. Oh, they're going to smash something. They're smashing our Great Furnace, not our Mirror Enforcer. Okay. Okay, we get Atog. So we're going to want to keep the Battle Rage for the Atog. Uh, they have two cards in hand, so they could definitely kill us, but we cannot kill them yet. We have nothing left to draw, except we could play the Atog and sack the Wellspring to draw a card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we would still be able to kill with the Atog even if we lose the Wellspring. Okay, we're going to see if we can draw a fling here. We have one draw. Um, okay, we can play the Wellspring and sack it. And we have one more chance to draw a fling. Oh, we get Thought Cast. But we won't have the mana to fling if we play the thought cast. So let's just sacrifice the wellspring and see if we draw fling off the top. Okay, we miss. 
Um, in that case, we can play the thought cast. Play the chromatic star. And pass back to the opponent. Tapped out. Opponent can do what they will. We have nine life. They have three cards in hand. So we're probably dead here. Chain lightning going after face. Puts me to five. Thermo puts me to four. Fire blast or lightning bolt ends it. They still have two spells in hand. Okay, that's it. GG. Got the 2-3. Well, 